Hey guys, it's Matt. Once we get past this beginning or opening, I think this will evolve into a pretty serious discussion where if you um, don't comment too quickly, you take in all factors and all areas of consideration, I think you'll struggle with this to a degree the way I do. It'll seem like an easy answer at first, but it's not. This video is not about what's being shown here, the robot, <laughs> the robot umpires used in all AAA ballparks next year, removing of the human element. We're going to use this as an example, but it's just one example of literally millions of different possibilities. The main premise is, in 2023, where society and culture has gone and the people around us have gone, is it worth ever again, taking a stand in any area that could stall the not nilk tidal wave coming in over society and culture. So it, I know it seems, oh, you're going to want to type right now, and you, oh, sure, it's worth taking. L listen, l l l l l listen to all the factors first. I, I, um, well, you can comment whatever you want, but to me, at first... There's something deep down that says, even though if I, if, if I made this my mission in life and the regular people around me that loved baseball, the normie types, they didn't want robot umpires and even they got on board. And when I called the talk radio stations for sports talk, they got riled up about it and said, yeah, we don't want this. We're tired of all this. And even if, even if that, even if we're able to stall it out, it's like, to me, it's kind of like my favorite example, taking a sheet of four by eight plywood out into the ocean and trying to hold back a nor'easter. Okay, maybe if this was my mission in life and people down the street actually cared about it, if I talk to them anything about anything we research, of course, um, that's called conspiracy, they won't care about it. This is something we can see not milk tactics here, trying to implement the digital over the human element. They won't see it the way we do, but the guy down the, the cul-de-sac has a chance of caring about it like you do. Yeah, I don't want those robot umpires in baseball. I hate the replay system in football. So there's part of me that says, like, yeah, it's worth, even though eventually the tides are going to come in and overtake the 4 by 8 sheet of plywood, even if it can be held back for a year or two, if you got enough people fired up, it's worth taking a stand. And the other side of me, about worry about yourself, individual spiritual journeys. We see the not milk tide coming in across all of society and culture. And the other side of me says, what's the point? If we took a stand, even for something trivial like this, you know, okay, we, again, we could hold it back or maybe keep it out of Major League Baseball for a few years. But isn't the not milk tide over society and culture that strong or so strong where it's just would be prolonging the inevitable and you'd be making it your mission in life and taking a stand in one little area of society you'd have to i'd have to put everything i had into this to even have a chance of you know keeping it out of baseball i'd have to call every sports talk station and just end this channel and even then okay the tide eventually will probably come in and even so so what? It's still making its move on all other fronts. Uh, gender fluidity, the destruction of movies, politics becoming more and more ridiculous. It's still, I'm trying to defend one trench, for example. It still has its army of zombified generals uh, invading all trenches all over the world. It's like, it, so we all see it's pointless to a degree, but is it like a moral issue or going into your death, is it important at least once to take a stand in this sort of way against the not milk flood and tide coming in? And you know, of course, we already have with our, quote, um, well, truth investigations. Let's just call it that. We already have, and we've lost family and friends over it, and we went about it the wrong way, and we've learned our lessons, and we wouldn't do it the same way now as we did it. I'm talking about something like this that's pretty trivial. In a way, if you could get, it's, a, it's one area where you could get regular people and people that investigate things that like we do together. We wouldn't be doing it for the same reason. 
if we were sitting around after a few paps blue ribbons and I said, you know, this not milk and society culture uh, basically can be seen as an entity that wants to re remove the human being from understanding itself and move human beings down towards the digital. And I mean, a, a spiritual battle, they would think we're nuts. I mean, you could never talk to anybody that would, on the normal side, that would be fired up about this issue. They would see, see it at the very surface level, but they still might scream out, my grandfather talk to me about, and I'm, this is true, going to Scheib Park in Philadelphia, seeing uh, Mickey Mantle and Jackie Robinson come in, and uh, 75 cents for certain seats, and you could get close to your, he, he would be, he'd be rolling around his grave if he could ever find out that Major League Baseball is using AAA to eventually take, remove the quote, human element and have robots <laughs> call balls and strikes. So the regular person could still, they'll never see it the way we see it as this digital inhuman slash demonic incursion. But okay, can we do all this? And even if we do keep it out of Major League Baseball for a few years, or it's still got its thousands of Count Dracula generals on all other fronts, and what's the point? And somebody would say, wait a second, no, 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 you, you, you know, okay, it is worth it, even if there's one little thing to protect. I mean, I'm thinking of the end of the never-ending story, right? Just one little grain of sand of whatever that place was called, uh, Fantasia, was it? Druidia? from space balls, as long as there was that one grain left, um, you know, the, the imagination of a real person, not a Treyo, whatever the other kid's name was, he brought it back. And look, uh, it, I do struggle with this because it's so, talk about the Borg, you know, resistance <laughs> is futile. It, it, it is futile to this degree, again, because I could do everything, I could make this my life's mission. And I could go around and wear sandwich signs and raise money and still, uh, at my, the very best, am I going to be able to keep keep it out of baseball for more than a few years? Why it's, why it's invading all of society and culture on every other front. And the other mistake I may be making is assuming that you could find people down the cul-de-sac or in your group of friends that even care. Do they even care? I went, the first YouTube video I found on this just reported the news of what AAA parks were, will, were, will be doing next year. And no, um, it's about half and half. They're, for half the games, they're going to exclusively use, and they keep calling it a robot. It, I don't understand that. That's part of Not Nilk tactics, too. It's not a robot. I have some big R2-D2 standing behind the batter. It's probably going to be just like the line call, a laser on a gun or something like they do in tennis. So I don't know why they keep calling it robot but you know they've got reasons for that too i found the youtube video I'm like, okay this is my only way to sample what regular people will be thinking about it i scrolled down and there were no comments are there other youtube videos i mean i didn't research it that long but at this point if anybody was screaming out throwing rubber duckies that matt you're talking about is it worth drawing a line in the sand and if you did all this you probably could get the tide pushed back for a year or two. You couldn't get the tide pushed back, Matt, even if you devoted your life to this because somebody throwing rubber duckies was saying, nobody cares. Nobody cares about anything anymore unless it directly affects their bank account or their pocketbooks or what happens inside the walls of their home. Something they might care about, like baseball or Star Wars, or they're not going to do anything anything, no matter what reason they see that could be explained why it's happening. They're going to have their own reasons why it's happening, which will be different from our reasons in this community as to why it's happening. But in any front, in any trench, unless it invades their home or their bank account or them personally, nobody gives a shit about anything anymore. Some people may say, and I don't know if I could argue with those people, if you really ask the rest of your family on the couch as you're watching the World Series or whatever during uh, Grandpa Grandpa Ginny's, <laughs> maybe in this day and age that is possible. I'm not going to rescind that. For, you know why? Um, in birthday, hundredth birthday party, could say, "Do you guys see how they they they're going to take these minor league uh, robot umpires 
and now they've brought it into the major leagues. Isn't it? Remember the old days, guys, when you know arguing Billy, Billy, what was his name? Billy Parker, Billy Madison. No, it was. But what's the name of the damn manager for the New York Yankees? Inserted Billy Martin. Whatever, we'll just call him Billy. <laughs> Billy Parker for now. I'll think of it later. Please don't waste a comment on it. Um, you know, him arguing with the with the umpires and Tommy Lasorda arguing with the umpires. Isn't that part of baseball? Shouldn't that be that human side? And the people on the couch would go, um, yeah, you know, I, I don't want these. I don't want all this electronics. But they wouldn't care. They would never even take the effort to probably raise up uh, their fat butts off the couch to do anything about it. So... I guess I'm kind of answering my own question. You know, is it worth taking a stand other than what we've already done in terms of truth research with family and friends? Okay, we've done that. And I'm not going to, we're not going to talk about that anymore. I mean, that you can't go to your best friend or your uncle and, and talk about not milk systems and evil cabals. They just obviously they don't buy it and we could be in two different realities. We'll talk about that some other time. So I'm talking about something where they, we see the, the reason for it being different, but we would generally agree. And the more I talk it out, the more I think, you know, you call the sports talk radio in Philadelphia, maybe I could get some of the hosts and some of the people listening fired up. Say, say remember what your grandfather told you about baseball. Why are they trying to remove the human element? The people listening might shake their head as they're sitting in their traffic jams and agree. But they would, you know, in the end of the day, to get anybody to do anything about it, you know, they would need to call or write a letter to the Major League Baseball office and saying, we don't want, we want the umpires, we want the human element, we want the arguing of balls and strikes. And, um, you know, they even know thousands listening to the sound of my voice, uh, if I was calling sports talk shows or whatever, they would agree. But they, would they really care? Do they, do they care in any way to stop back the not milk tide coming in? of dehumanization. I don't think they do. You can get a hundred people to write a letter. It just, you, you need thousands and tens of thousands. And the more I talk this out, I thought this would be this big, <laughs> big debate. Where's one area where we could dig in and just for, just for the sake of making a stand, make a stand where the reasons we need to make the stand would be different than the people you're recruiting on the street to help you out, but just to make a stand somewhere. And, you know, I guess we still should talk about does that, even though it would be futile, futile, would it matter? Does it matter? Is that what you're supposed to do in life? And as I'm talking this out now, I still think, no, I still, I'm entirely convinced about the worry of, worry about yourself, worry about your side, the, the individual spiritual journey um, is all that matters. In fact, I'm kind of picturing me talking to me, saying, you dumb son of a beach, you tried to influence society and culture, it wanted you to get involved and try to influence it, rejected in every way, you running around with your picket signs saying no robot balls and strikes in baseball, you were giving it the energy and attention that it craves, that's what it wants, you jerk. So I guess I'm kind of answering my own question, maybe this video won't be very long. All right, let's come back to that, completely forget every place that we dug in over here, try to open our minds back up and then kind of come back one last time, but use still what's on the screen that I haven't even addressed yet. The 33 comes up here. What does the gematria from reality tell us, the synchronicities? Does it tell us something that we can use in this debate that we had in the first section? So let me just jump right into it. Again, the the whole point about automatic balls and strikes, and this is not about baseball, just using this one example. So after a simple Google search, you could see what I put in, simply typed robot umpires in AAA or triple A baseball, which is the minor league level right before coming up to the major leagues. It says, the automatic balls and strikes system will be deployed in all AAA parks, including the Texas affiliate Round Rock Express. In bold, all 30 AAA ballparks will use robot umpires to call balls and strikes for the 2023 season, according to ESPN. All 30 AAA, AAA, 111, 33. 30 with AAA. Yeah, it's another 33 presentation. 
12 years ago or 10 years ago, the entire truth community thought that every 33 presentation was planted by... <laughs> Matt, do we have to laugh every time you do? It's planted by secret societies and planted by the Trilateral Commission. We know now... Oh, no, we don't... Okay, I'll just give you my opinion. Um, most presentations of Gematria are not planted. There's too many millions and millions of them in different ways reality shows its synchronicities to us. It comes out of reality itself. It might be pulled out of reality because we are a certain type of person. Okay, I don't know if we want to stray into that in this video. We may pull synchronicities in Gematria out of reality where your best friend doesn't. So let's in the context of what's being talked about here, is it worth taking a stand anywhere in society, in culture? Um, do the numbers or the gematria, what's, boom, right in my face. You know, do, am I positive that it's there's 30 major league teams and it's backed by AAA, so it's 33? Am I positive this is reality making a gematria presentation? No, but I think when we see this sort of thing, we're right eight times out of 10 or nine times out of 10. And then this has been happening for so many years and we've seen so many thousands of this type of thing that the sample size becomes so gigantic that it's sending a message in some way. The people that broke down the Mandela effect and saying, what message is reality sending? I, I, don't, I still don't agree with that. I don't see that. But I, I applaud what they are doing or what they're trying to do. The people that say, oh, if they, they remove the Kit Kat dash, and, and that's a Mandela effect for some people. Like, what's, it, what's the message that reality's, okay, I don't see it, but okay, I like the way they're thinking about that. Because the gematria, the endless presentation of even, even the nine paired with the 11, if you think all that's planted by the trilateral committee, it's not. They understand the power numbers and, and the fundamental basis and even you could say pillars, oh no, pillars of reality. They understand these things. So it's nothing wrong with we trying to understand these things. You've been taught not to go there because they don't want you going there. People email me after almost every video saying, Matt, you talked about this and I turned the corner and there it was in my face, a gigantic sign all the time, all the time. Sure, there's something to that as well, but I don't think it's any different than what we're looking at here. The presentation of certain Gematria, the 33s, the who knows, okay? But we're seeing these things and even if your best friend saw them, which maybe they don't, if it's a different type of spiritual entity, they might not get these sorts of things. But if they did, they wouldn't assign any significance to it anyway. But we've seen so much of this. Most people listening to this would say, yeah, they, these numbers showing up in synchronicities, it's significant for us. Okay, what does that tell us about the opening 15 minutes of this argument? If reality itself is your you know, real people are pulling clues and signs and numbers and gematria and pulling things out of reality, or you could, if you don't like it put that way, because say reality is, is, knows who you are, wants you to graduate, wants you to say, I've done enough of this, and it's showing you enough to where you get so fed up saying, this is ridiculous. It doesn't matter. Whichever way you see it, what does that say about the first 15 minutes of this argument? To me, it says... You know, if reality itself is showing me synchronicity, synchronicities and things, it means it's even more pointless to go out and try to take a stand to hold back the robot umpires. Will they make them chubby and smelly? Will they? Why don't they put a damn? They could get all the blow-up dolls people don't use anymore because of the, all the internet porn. Paint them like umpires. Put the damn laser balls and strikes decoder and place the damn thing behind the batter. At least you'd have there like something that looks a little bit human. You could spray it some smell so it'll even smell like a real umpire. A few points here. Whatever can be pushed back on, does anybody think we're going to be successful and it'll permanently go away from baseball? Almost everybody listening to this would say, you might be able to push something like this back. Again, this is just one area of thousands where somebody may dig in and not like whether they see what we see or research what we research or not. They might not like what where society and culture is going. A lot of people are very upset about the, you would just say, fluid pause 
p- gender that people are upset but you know and in, in some ways in their own ways they complain and they do the little blog groups and they push back but they push back in ways that don't matter like twitter accounts most people listening to this would say look even if you're successful in one of these areas it, you, it's going to inedi- inevitably get to where it wants to get the not milk so you have a little what is it called a pyric victory pyric whatever the hell that means and it's still going to happen but if you are a spiritual entity and reality is showing you all these different things and showing you Mandela effects and numbers and things are synchronicities, what's the point of even caring about, you know, our, what do we have, most of us? 30, 40 years left, some of us 10 to 15, like, who cares? There's nothing wrong with a worry about yourself philosophy. I'm here to change the world. Actually, you could say the world is here to change us. The creeps are role players to a degree to change us. So I thought this would be more of a debate. At least it might be for you, but for me, it's really not. As I talk this out, is it worth taking a stand in any facet of of reality to hold back the not milk tide in areas where we could combine forces with my friend Tony and the regular people in the world and just for just get a little bit of a victory in saying you will not. What is it? Um, Gandalf to the damn. Ball rock, bail rock, uh, thou shall not pass, or you will not pass, you son of a beach. You will not, you know, you, not, not nilk, you will not pass. You will not put your robot <laughs> balls and strikes callers into Major League Baseball. You will not pass, you bail rock, son of a bitch. So, you know, is it worth it? Mm, I've kind of answered my own question. No, and I'm even more convinced now. It's an individual spiritual journey and worry about your worry about yourself is not selfish. I've said this. If you see a little old lady with a broken down car in the rain trying to change a tire and you help out and you help everybody you can and you rescue cats and you do, that's not the opposite of worry about yourself. That is worry about yourself. That's absolutely a benefiting the helper as much as the helpee. It's not selfish. If anybody is a proponent of solipsism, they're the only one that exists here. Even I think I'm exist, but I'm fooling myself, I guess, to the ones that are truly committed to solipsism. Most of us here would be more of a modified solipsism, where you would say there's a limited amount of real people. I don't want to speak for you, but a limited amount of real people here. And there's a lot more fake and background than it seems. All the, so the more you think of that then the reality is here for you, okay? For you to accomplish something for yourself. The reality is here for you the closer you get down towards solipsism. And if that's the case and you're moving down that sliding scale, once again, there'd be no point in going out trying to fix something because somebody that would have that belief set would say, it's screwed up actually to help you change. It has to be screwed up. Somebody like Melvin P. has to be a loathsome, golem-type creature. If he was likable, if Dr. Jeff Bezos and his Bradford White water heater going up, if it was likable, it wouldn't work. It has to be one billion Amazon stock options. It has to be like that. If not, it wouldn't work. And if the reality is ultimately here for you, which is where I've been going, of course, it's here for us, as bad as it is then it doesn't matter you don't if you go out and try to fix it that sounds right now as i'm talking this out one of the dumbest things anybody's ever done if it's constructed to it's constructed to be all fucked up because it needs to be for you to get something out of it i'm a believer in that now Matt, what what you make videos on a channel just to answer your own damn question in this case yeah thanks for listening